I want to bring you a story out of Rockwall, Texas. This is a post written by a mom. Her name is Corey Booth. She wrote this on August 9th at 3.02 a.m. If you have a student in Rockwell ISD, if you have had a student attending Springer Elementary, please take a moment to read this personal account. We apologize for the length, but this is urgent and it's a time-sensitive situation. I want to begin with some background information in order for you to have context and a better chance at recognizing these signs in your own child. In October of 2023, our four-year-old came home on a Thursday afternoon telling us that his teacher showed him her boobs and her penis, but it didn't look like daddy's. It looked like mommy's. In shock and confusion, our first question was, really, buddy, are you being silly? He replied, no, mommy, and then repeated the same story. In disbelief, I asked what color her bra and underwear were. They were black, mommy, black. Then he ran off and we processed. We were trying to figure out why he would say something like this. He is in pre-K. Was there another student talking about their sister? We don't know. Our minds went in a million different directions. Our oldest student overheard the comments, and as we were all going to bed, she said, Mom, that's not normal, right? Why is he saying this? So at bedtime, I asked him again, Buddy, were you telling Mommy a story? Because if that's true, tell Mommy. But if it's not... We can't make up stories like that. And then he went on telling me and my oldest the same exact story as above. We were disturbed to say the least, but we weren't sure what to do with it. He went to school the following day, which was a Friday, and he came home bouncing off the walls, overstimulated beyond anything we've ever seen in any of our children. We couldn't get him to focus. We couldn't get him to calm down to any normal degree. My husband and I thought he must be overtired. He must need to take a nap. Did he have some food with crazy levels of red dye? He was not his normal self all weekend. We didn't know why or what had caused this overstimulation of his behavior. Monday comes and he goes to school. He comes home erratic and scared. Mommy, mommy, check my folder. My teacher said I was in trouble and she sent you a note. I asked... Did you get in trouble, honey? What happened? He said, no, mommy, my teacher said she wrote you a note. Check. I checked the calendar and there was no note. No smiley face, no sad face, nothing. He was so upset. She's a liar, mommy. She's a liar. I tried to console him, but he was very upset. This was the second time he had come home asking me about a note from the teacher on his calendar. The next day was Halloween. He went to school as normal, and when he came home, it was the same scenario. Mommy, check my calendar. But there was nothing there. No note, no smile, no frown. And he repeated again. She is a liar. She said I was in trouble, and she was going to write you a note. But there was no note. I consoled him, and I asked if he still wanted to go trick-or-treating. Of course he did. Halloween night, as our family was sorting through all the candy, he starts sharing, saying that his teacher goes to the bathroom with him and closes the door. That she touches him and touches herself and smiles like this pumpkin. Exact sticker below that he pointed to. My other children says she isn't supposed to do that. What do you mean? He goes on to share many more details. He shared that his teacher keeps him in from recess because he's special. In that moment, we absolutely knew we had to take action. We called a friend who's a police officer to ask what we should do. He advised us to call the local police. November 1st, we contacted the Rockwell PD, who then pushed it to the sheriff. We then led, we were then led to a meeting with CAC. Our son was interviewed at CAC, and after they are finished with the interview and the investigation, the sheriff tells us the resource officer from the school was reviewing video footage that showed what looked like two boys being held back in class during recess. 
and one looks like our son. She then tells us verbatim, The interview didn't go as expected. We, the sheriff's department, were hoping it was the teacher's aide, not the head teacher. That caught us by great surprise. Our child had nothing but high praises for the teacher's aide and had very clearly stated who was hurting him. We as parents were in shock to hear this from the supposed investigator less than five hours into the investigation. That day, November 1st, both teachers were put on administrative paid leave. That night, our son divulged that his teacher put her finger in his bottom four times and articulated the noises to match. This was absolutely the most disturbing, upsetting thing a mother could ever hear. It wasn't just a touch. She fully sodomized my child. We shared everything that he shared with us from our son with the appropriate officials. He was like a waterfall, more and more and more. On March 27th, the DA took our case before the special counsel without the video from the school as our ISD conveniently deleted it, and the teacher received a no bill due to the totality of the case, according to the DA. The video and other pertinent facts wouldn't have made a difference. We, of course, as parents, couldn't wrap our mind around any of it. The totality of the case. From November 1st forward, the Sheriff's Department, the school, and the DA told us to stay quiet, that speaking up would compromise the case. If this is you, don't believe that lie. We wish we would have spoken up immediately because now this teacher is getting ready to start a new school year with new unsuspecting students and families. God forbid you find yourself in a similar situation. But if you have had a similar situation where your child was held in from recess or you see drastic behavior changes or mention strange behaviors, Please have your child eva evaluated to see if they will speak. Unfortunately, you cannot ask directly or lead in any way, but please come forward. This teacher is teaching again this year, and as a family, we are still dealing with the repercussions of this teacher's disgusting act against our son. She moved quickly, having him in her class less than three months. We are confident he is not the first victim. We asked the administration to give us a heads up if they were going to bring her back to the school because we had other students in attendance. The principal assured me she would. Tuesday after Easter, I dropped my children off at school and my oldest child sees said teacher in the cafeteria. Knowing all that his little brother shared and all the changes that he witnessed and his brother that he witnessed with his brother, he was beside himself. He walked into the office and asked if he could call me, and the principal's response was, the past is in the past, and it's time to move, up, move on. Oh, per page 155 of the 2024 Student Handbook, students can request for cameras to be installed in the classrooms for any child with any special designation. I would encourage you as a parent or even as a teacher to request this to protect our most precious gifts, our children. Signed, Timothy and Corey Booth. On the 10th, she made another post. Our family's response to the letter issued by Springer Elementary today at 2 p.m. I would start off by saying RISD has had ample amount of time to address this matter and is now trying to call a peaceful sharing of urgent information hostile. They are choosing to escalate a situation that could have used that attention months ago. Like Rockwall ISD stated, our family lives by the fact that student safety is our utmost concern, hence the information that was disseminated yesterday. While the district attorney's office did issue a no bill, that doesn't mean there wasn't evidence. In fact, rather than dismissing the case, it has been left with the option to retry her when and if more evidence comes to light. Our family has been through hell and back and would never want another family to feel the same way. We have done everything by the book and have been in silence for too long. How convenient is it for our ISD to finally address the situation when questions are being asked by the public and a rightful uproar is taking place? I just found out today that parents whose students were in my son's class were never alerted to the fact that there was an active investigation. 
which makes sense because my husband and I couldn't understand why no one was asking questions. Now we know why. Our original intent in sharing was to bring light to the situation so that more families could be made aware, protected, and come forward to demand change. Our ultimate goal is to write legislation to have cameras in every class, which would not only protect the student, but keep schools safe from pedophiles, but also pr protect teachers from being wrongly accused. The only hostile environment that was created was the one I sent my son into. Now this is what Rockwall had sent out that she was responding to. Dear Springer families, teachers, and staff, we're so happy to see our families and students last night at the Meet the Teacher event. Our teachers and staff have worked hard coming back on duty to prepare the building and classrooms. Unfortunately, a former parent who is no longer associated with Springer Elementary left a three-page letter on parents and employees' cars regarding a legal matter from last year. Last night's event was disruptive and created a hostile environment. Two to safety concerns brought on by this individual's act actions with the Rockwell Police Department. We notified them. We want to ensure families when these allegations were made in the fall of 2023, the matter was thoroughly investigated by the Rockwell County Sheriff's Office and the Rockwell County District Attorney's Office. The district cooperated fully. Ultimately, the matter was no-billed by Rockwall County Grand Jury in spring of 2024, which means no further action was taken by the DA. We take all matters regarding safety very seriously and work cooperatively with law enforcement. So there has been an update, updated August 13th, to include parents' petition calling on Rockwell ISD to protect children from sexual misconduct. Families gathered outside the Rockwell Courthouse Saturday morning to pray with a mother who believes her child was essayed by a teacher at Rockwell Independent School District. Community members were also there to protest how officials kept this case quiet and let the teacher return to the classroom. A parent said they never notified anybody. They didn't put the students first. They brushed it under the rug. In Corey's shocking story, accusing a female pre-K teacher at Springer Elementary of molesting her then four-year-old, went viral last Friday on social media. With the new school year starting on Monday, Corey and her husband Tim both decided to end their silence so unsuspecting families would be made aware. There has to be change, she said. We have to demand it. In addition to posting on Facebook, she placed flyers on parents' cars during the Thursday night Meet the Teacher event at Springer. It was the only thing I could think of to do to let parents know. I can't have another case come up and know I was silent. The district then sent out a notice Friday, which I just read to you. At Saturday's protest, Corey said there was no disruption or hostility, and no one asked her to leave. To go on, it says that she believes that the reason this is all being pushed under the rug is because of some of the connections that this teacher has in the community. The teacher has been identified, and I'm only going to give the first name here, but it's Jamie. And on Facebook, Corey posted, Our ultimate goal is to write legislation to have cameras in every class to protect our students. Corey said Saturday her family regrets not speaking up sooner, but the sheriff's office, school officials, and the district attorney told them to stay quiet. And she wondered why. She said she felt that she moved into a safe community, but found out it's just a good old boys club. Booth says she thinks one of the reasons her case was brushed under the rug is Jamie being from one of the very oldest families in Rockwall. They are very connected. Her great-grandfather was a real estate agent who at various times served as the mayor of Rockwall, president of the Rockwall ISD school board, and Rockwell's county clerk. Her aunt worked for Rockwell ISD for 42 years under six superintendents. Rockwell Mayor Trace Johansson weighed in Saturday to defend his fellow elected officials, posting to Facebook the following. People need to use facts and logic and not jump to conclusions. 
He claims that the school district and law enforcement followed all the proper procedures, and he was skeptical of the whole truth of these accusations. Quote, the Rockwell ISD Board of Trustees are people I know and trust personally. I know and trust Sheriff Garrett. He is a lifelong Rockwell resident whom we elected to trust and handle these situations on behalf of us and the public. I cannot fathom that literally dozens of our fellow upstanding Rockwell County citizens conspired to cover up something illegal. Therefore, I assume that the social media posts are not presenting the whole story. End quote. A comment on his post states that another elected official, former Rockwell City Councilman Patrick Trowbridge, was arrested in 2020 on CP charges and sent to prison for 10 years. One of the dads at Saturday's protest reminded the crowd that Rockwell fireman Jason Frankenfield was arrested just in June for possessing, possessing messages featuring sexually explicit images of girls who were aged 8 to 11. Frankenfield told police they were just role-playing. The parent said, Rockwell has a problem and we need to do something. The Booth's allegations are not the first sexual abuse scandal to rock, to rock Rockwall ISD. Last year, parents of six kindergarten girls sued the district <laughs> and the since replaced principal of Rochelle Elementary after a Kane Middle School student allegedly essayed the girls while they were participating in an unauthorized school program. In 2021, a Kane Middle School orchestra teacher was sentenced to 10 years in prison for sending sexually explicit emails to an eighth grader whose blood he said he also wanted to drink. At that time, the Rockwell County District Attorney said, bad people can hide in plain sight. Hmm. I think she's right about that, based on all of these posts. Now, I started reading about this on a Facebook group, and there are a ton of comments that say the community is divided on whether the parents completely made this up, and this was just an allegation from the mom that she made up for whatever crazy reason, or they completely believe her. So... I don't know, but it, it appears based on these posts that it is tearing the, the county apart. They are literally divided. And this is, you know, a big reason that people stay silent, I think, because people don't think they're going to be believed. And maybe if they've loved the school and they're close to teachers or administrators there, they're just never going to be able to fathom that this could have happened and then they turn against the parent who's trying to report it. I'm not saying things aren't sometimes made up because of course they, but I mean, this is a four-year-old child making up these things if they were made up at all. And now the parents are being called liars over it. It's, it's very disturbing to know that these things go on and the parents aren't supported in it. So I'm going to attach the district meeting that was had where they discussed all of this. And then I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on what you think and how this is being handled so far. My name is Corey Booth. I am the mother of the child who was allegedly, we can all say, molested by this teacher. I want to set the record straight on a few things. What she just said about CPS, technically they closed their case before the video was supposedly deleted. That video showed my son corroborated what he said, that there was another boy held back in that classroom with him. That video showed it and it was told to us by the Sheriff's Department on November 1st when we recorded it. Everybody had their dates wrong. <laughs> this teacher was removed from the school on November 1st, or at least that's what the Sheriff's Department told us, okay? He, that night, told us that she sodomized him, okay? And you know what happened? I called CPS. CPS came and put eyes on him on November 2nd. And I said to Brian, whatever his last name is at CPS, this is what my son is saying was done. Can we please have a SAGE exam? And you know what he said to me? 
Tell me, I've never been a sex, I've not been sexually assaulted. My husband has not been sexually assaulted. You know what they said to me? We don't do that for boys. What? We don't do that for boys. Then I called the sheriff's department and I said, we need a SANE's exam. And you know what they said to me? Do you know what they said? They said, I need, the investigator said, I need to get approval from my supervisor or from the DA. We waited until November, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And you know when the report came back, guess what? There was no physical evidence. But if anybody knows, in any sort of case like this, you need to do it immediately. Yes. And the case would not be there. I didn't know, because when we went there, they told us, no, we'll set everything up. This pretty much follow our lead. In the video that is set, the set video that's missing, that's been deleted, supposedly, the DA told us it was deleted, number one. It wasn't me just saying it. Number two, in when he was in the CAC getting the forensic interview, we went into a room with the investigator. That investigator told us verbatim that she that W Dick was watching the video as we were as he was being interviewed. So I said to the DA, yeah. check his body cam. I said to the DA, do we not have the video was deleted by the district in 30, 40 days. This was filed with the district based on what I've been told on November 1st. She was removed from the classroom, which was plenty of time, and any officer recording or watching video like that would have a body cam. I yes. figured out later. So where is it? And we also have the video from the CSC when she was telling us they were hoping it was the other teacher. They yes. were trying to pin it yes. on the other teacher. Because she's my like, uncle. I said, what do you mean? Absolutely. What do you mean you're trying to fake the other teacher? And when we finally watched that video from the actual forensic interview, not once. Did he mention the other teacher? But he sure did mention all these things that she did. He also mentioned, they asked him, did anyone ever take video of you? You know what he said? Four-year-old would normally say, yeah, my mom does when I'm dancing in the living room. He didn't. He said, yes. And you know, they said who? And you know what they said? The teacher, the alleged teacher. And you know what the DA, I asked him to stop the video, and you know what he said to me? No good standing judge would ever take the testimony of a four-year-old to get a warrant on a warrant to get access to her phone. And I said, if she's doing this, why wouldn't you get that warrant? Because it would prove that she's either innocent or she's guilty. Right. And they said, we can't do that. Related. So if you think any of you over here First of all, all the security measures you talked about were to protect from outside predators. Yes. Yes. Overnight. 
and I wanted to keep some sort of normalcy, and she was removed on November 1st. I didn't want to rip their whole worlds apart because it had already happened. So I was creating normalcy, and I talked to Ms. Olive, and I said, please protect my children. If you're bringing her back, will you please let me know? And she said, yes, I will, I promise. Okay. Well, you know what? That didn't happen. The Tuesday after Easter, you know what happened? My fifth grader walks into the, ca walks into the cafeteria after going to dismiss the classes, and who does he see? He sees a woman that his brother has very clearly said over and over and over, <clears throat> did a lot of damage to him. Thank okay? you. Thank he got this advanced set. He went to the principal's office and said, I need to call my mom. Thank she you. She put her arm around him and said, the past is in the past. It's time to move on. Mm -hmm. What principal who has overseen these students, knowing that they too have been traumatized, right? She knew, would say that to a, to a 12 year old kid. And you want her overseeing your students? You want her to be a representative of your school district? I am calling for Rockwell. Rockwell has a reputation that they are trying to constantly, I'm a real estate broker. This is not in my favor, right? This is not in my favor. My job is to sell houses in Rockwell County and all over, right? As many as I can sell. Well, I can tell you right now, anyone that asks me, I will absolutely not be telling them that Rockwell ISD is a great school district, which I did do for the last six years, okay? This does not benefit me in any way. We were forced to come out because we had no other choice. Because I could not have another pre-K student go through what my child went through just because it's a good old boys club. And you know what, Corey Booth? Yes. You're not part of the good old boys club. And I know that. And you know what? I don't want to be. I do not want to be. And you know what? Exemplify that you want. What I call each and one of every one of you to, to do is to do the hard thing. Sorry. Turn over all the stones. Rid our schools of pedophiles. They should not be a safe haven for our, for our children, right, or for the schools. The pedophiles should not be safe in our schools. It should be safe for our children. So I, what I'm asking you to do is to do just that. Do all the hard work and become all that you say you already are. Yes. And be a light, a shining light on the hill. And be a model for every other school district in the state of Texas. And show them how it is done. Because yes. this is a systemic problem. And so I talk to each one of you. And I would love to know, personally, my question is, if you knew the allegations, which you all do, tell me that you would put your children in this, in this classroom. Never. And if you would, you need to resign from your position right now. Because you are not a